Hi, today I'm going to share with you tips on how to eat a whole plant food, low calorie dense diet. And just to remind you about what calorie density is, it's when you measure calories per pound of any given food. And when you fill up on low calorie density foods, you're getting full and you're filling up your stomach, but you are consuming fewer calories. And so weight loss is inevitable. The least calorie dense foods are going to be the foods in the first four categories of the chart that you see here. And so that's vegetables at 100 calories per pound, fruits at 300 calories per pound, whole grains at 500 calories per pound, and legumes or beans at 600 calories per pound. So you wanna to stick to those food items. And you also wanna avoid high calorie dense foods, which include oil at 4,000 calories per pound. You also wanna avoid processed foods, sugary foods, meat products and animal products, and dairy products. So let's get into it. The very first tip is to clear your fridge. It's so important that you clear your fridge and your pantry of all the bad foods that are high in calories and the processed foods and any kind of junk food and also meat products or animal products. Next, you want to fill your pantry and fridge with all of the food items from the first four categories and you want to fill it with the healthy low calorie dense foods that are plant-based so that that is the only option you have when it comes to eating and you aren't sidetracked or influenced by other unhealthy processed high calorie density foods. Another tip is to water saute your meals instead of oil saute. So this can be for vegetables, tofu, mushrooms, whatever it is that you're sauteing in a pan. Also, it'll keep the kitchen much cleaner if you're not using oil. You can also use applesauce instead of oil if you're making a cake or any kind of baked good. If you do happen to find a recipe that you like that does include oil, I just typically omit that and it's fine. For example, I had a green curry recipe that required a little bit of oil and I just didn't put it in and to me it tasted fine without it. So I would just leave that ingredient out. Or you can just substitute it with something that is whole plant food. If you do what you've always done, you'll get what you've always gotten. So make a change and try it out and be optimistic about it. The next tip is to meal prep. So if you can create routines and take the thinking out of eating, that is going to be ideal for weight loss and for eating this diet. And what that includes is having food ready for you in advance so that when you're starving, you don't grab the unhealthy food, but instead you, you grab your food that's already prepared for you. So you can make an oil-free hummus. You can make a huge batch of vegetable soup that you can freeze and have it for lunches. You can buy frozen fruits and vegetables from the market. Where we live, um, Costco and Whole Foods both have a wonderful selection of frozen fruits and veggies that we purchase. And so we always have that in our freezer. You can prepare and freeze rice, lentils, quinoa, and other grains. You can also meal prep some salad toppings. So if you eat you know, canned beans, you can open up and rinse a can of garbanzo beans or kidney beans so that you can easily prep a big salad for lunch. Another tip is to meal plan. So first you wanna compile a variety of your favorite whole plant food recipes that are low calorie dense, that don't have oil in them, um, no refined sugar, if salt, maybe just a little bit of salt. And get these recipes and create a meal plan for dinners and for breakfasts. So for us, we have a 30 day dinner meal plan. So every 30 days we recycle the meals that we eat and we eat them again. And for breakfast, we have a weekly meal plan. So Monday we'll have oatmeal with fresh strawberries. Wednesday we'll have oatmeal with fresh bananas. Friday we'll have oatmeal with fresh blueberries. Tuesday, Thursday we'll have cereal, but it'll be um, a less processed cereal like Engine 2 or Ezekiel. And we'll load our cereal with a lot of fresh fruit. Saturday, we'll have tofu scramble with two huge handfuls of fresh spinach that we water saute. And Sunday, we'll have whole wheat pancakes with fresh fruit on top. So we recycle our breakfasts on a weekly basis and our dinners on a 30-day monthly basis. And as far as lunch, you can have a huge salad or the soup that you made in advance that is frozen in your freezer or an open face sandwich on Ezekiel bread. So the point that I'm getting at is to have a routine. If you have a routine, it takes the thinking out of eating and you will succeed. Another tip is to dilute your foods. So for example, if you're gonna have whole grain pasta, you wanna dilute it with a huge portion of vegetables so that the ratio of your pasta compared to vegetables is very small. So dilute your calorie dense foods. 
Another tip is that if you're going to leave the house, you want to bring food with you. So you want to bring an apple, a banana, a baked potato, oil-free hummus with carrots. You want to have something so that when you get hungry, you're not tempted to eat out. If you're going on vacation, you want to make sure you carry forward your healthy lifestyle while you're on vacation too. So eating a whole plant food diet is not part-time, it's full-time. It's the lifestyle that we choose. And if we choose it, we don't want to go on vacation and splurge and gain weight and then make it extremely hard for ourselves when we return because we've established bad habits. When you're on vacation, continue eating healthy and plant-based. Go to the local grocery store and stock up on all the good fruits and veggies, whole grains, beans, tofu, tempeh, potatoes, whatever it is that you want and fill up your little kitchen if you're in a hotel or an airbnb or condo wherever it is that you're staying fill it up with good healthy foods and cook for yourself maybe you want to choose to eat out once or twice maybe you want to call ahead at that restaurant and see what options they have but it would be ideal if you could cook for yourself most of the time during the vacation because then you come back and you don't have to struggle with getting back into a healthy eating routine when you're invited to someone's house for a gathering or a get together, a party, uh, chances are there won't be uh, food that is whole plant food that is low calorie dense. So you wanna bring your own food or you can eat before you go. If you bring your own food, it might spark the conversation for others and they might wonder, oh, what are you eating? And so that could be a good thing. Also, it's very important to limit the number of times you eat out at a restaurant. Restaurant food is going to be very high in salt, oil, and sugar. So it's gonna be really hard to eat low calorie dense foods at a restaurant. So what you could do is eat ahead of time. If you're going to the restaurant for social purposes, you can eat ahead of time. And so when you get to the restaurant, you're just enjoying the company of your family or friends, or um, you can call the restaurant in advance and find out, do they have whole plant foods like steamed veggies, steamed rice? Do they have a big potato, maybe a salad that you can get plain with whatever veggies are on it and you can bring your own dressing from home. The dressing I like to use is nutritional yeast, lemon and salt, and it's really delicious. Um, you can make your own and bring it to the restaurant or you can use the restaurant's condiments. They usually have balsamic vinegar, maybe lemon. So that is an option too. But in general, it's very important that you lessen the amount of times you eat out at a restaurant because that's gonna be counter to your goal of weight loss and living a healthy lifestyle. If you want drastic change, you've gotta take drastic measures. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a beautiful day and see you next time.